What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Pick 6 Podcast, CBS Sports Daily NFL Podcast. I'm Will Brinson. I'm your host. It is, I think it's Tuesday. That's my phone falling. Sorry. Mm. I think it's Tuesday. <laughs> that sums up the day pretty well. I think it's Tuesday, August 9th, no matter whether you're listening or watching. I, I'm not sure because we had a technical, we had technical difficulties on Monday. Um, Ryan Wilson unplugged the, uh, the, the hamster wheel. And, uh, you plug in your hamster wheel always yeah keep that that's how we keep this podcast running it's an okay. electronic ham- my hamsters don't actually run they're, they're they're just they're jogging on a on a motorized wheel lounge they lounge yeah they just lie there on the motorized wheel they figure out how to hook up the the wheel to the electronics so they don't actually have to uh, do anything which checks out for my hamsters um anywho ryan wilson joining me what's up buddy how you doing awesome how are you doing looking forward to seeing you next week i'm also looking forward to you Seeing you, looking forward to you and your enthusiasm for this trip to Nashville. Yeah, hopefully I make it. Um, now, is it true that you personally scheduled your travel time so in, order to, in order to minimize your, the time you're in Nashville to avoid uh, getting a tattoo? True or false? Debo, here's here's how this is going to go down. I, I can I can tell. It's like I can see into the future. I didn't book my travel, so I'm going to be getting there late. I'm all, I always I'm I'm very anxious by nature, so I'll be worried about that. I'll show up like 15, 20 minutes late. I'll be hustling. I'll be sweaty, and Brent will say something stupid like he just said, and I will just I'm going to lose. <laughs> I'm going to take off my I'm going to take off my backpack and sling it at him and hopefully hit him in the head, and uh, that that's how that's going to go down. So, um, and then I'll get a tattoo. Okay, all right, excited for that. Um. Someone asked why announce the start time if we don't adhere to it. We we send a notification when we, when we go live. That's, that's a that's a fair question though. Yeah, actually, we're the, actually sitting around just talking and realize we need. And the, by the way, the, not to victim blame here, but if you think Brinson's going to be on time based on something that's written on a sheet of paper, <laughs> yeah, right. I I got some bad news for you. Yeah, the only thing I'm on time for are tea times, and I'm usually cutting those pretty close. Yeah, you're not even on time for your flights. Well, uh, very rarely am I on time for flights. Um, played golf yesterday. Actually, shot a forty in the back nine. Pretty excited about that. Par three? Uh, no, uh, par four. I mean, par. I mean, par thirty six. <laughs> okay, Tiger Woods. <laughs> no, I played on a par four course. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just a standard golf course. Place called Pine Hollow. Um, uh huh. Well, congratulations. Me and my uh, playing partner beat the living crap out of two other guys, which is fun. Hmm. Sounds mm. like you're all their money. Your summer, your summer tennis exploits. Although you've been talking about tennis lately, maybe you. you I've been, no, I've been playing very much. I'm, I've I've played a couple times this summer in our league, and uh, I got I got absolutely waxed. I played t- breach might beat me right now. Yeah, he could beat you. Well, wait, they're, they're building new courts at our club. Uh-huh. It's been like two years, and so I, I, they had to they had to expand the belt line 440, and they and because just where the club is located, and so part of that involved some eminent domain. Oh uh, yeah, situation where they had to take. Land from up from our club, <laughs> took a couple courts down, and so they've been delayed in building the new ones, which has been very, very similar to the plight of the Native Americans when their land was taken. I can under, I'm sure you feel similarly about that. I, I feel your pain, sir. By the way, uh, I was at Bill's camp on Monday with Pete Prisco and and field producer Dane, and they had oh, just Daniel. how's Dane doing? Great. They had just driven in from Canton, Ohio, to where the Bills practice in Rochester. It's five and a half hours, and they listened to. One of the podcasts, I don't think I was on it. Hey, ours? Just, you were talking about cutting the grass. I don't think that was me, but but here's the first words out of Prisco's mouth when I saw him. I listened to that podcast. The first eight minutes was Brenton talking about cutting grass. What is going on? I said, well, if you listen to the podcast more often, you get stuff like that, and you get stuff like Brenton talking about playing on a par four course. <laughs> why, why do they, they they listen to a pick six podcast? They were in the car for five and a half hours. And they probably were killing time. Huh. So, but they had they they questioned what you were talking about uh, at the onset of these podcasts, and I said, "Well, clearly, you don't listen often enough." Um, then in the, in the comments, they're currently discussing whether whether emailing me is like a worthwhile, like whether I'll answer an email if it gets sent to me. Uh, no, he won't answer a text. Uh, he, I saw, I saw, I saw. he ain't answering a phone call, so don't even try that. Maybe oh, DMs. Like I, I, I've never DM'd you. I've had no reason to DM, but your DMs are open. I do believe. Yeah, I don't. I, I'm not. I'm, I'm okay. I've got too many chats going on, so like, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not That's reading. the other thing. I think during the season, maybe I read the maybe I read the DMs more. 
Um, Who do you respond to quickest when they text you? Your wife or someone else? Um, probably Devo. Oh boy, I think Devo might might want a word about that. Devo doesn't text me unless it's an emergency. He just slacks. And then you don't then you don't answer. On average, how long do you does it take you to respond to your wife when she texts you? Uh, hold on. Over I, under seven and a half minutes. Uh, it depends on the subject matter. On average. I mean, probably under. Well, I, I get I get text to my to my computer too, so that that makes things a little bit easier. In theory. I see the text when I'm I can be working on my computer. And I can get the text. Mm-hmm. Working. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I knew it was coming out of your mouth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no need for you to pretend like you weren't going to say that. Yeah. Uh, anywho, some football news. We're just gonna, this is a news podcast, sort of a catch-all. In terms of. Um, in terms of you know football news, so that's exciting. Also, uh, oh wait, did we make the finals of the uh, the, the the People's Choice Podcast Award? Uh oh, is that true? Am I in tattoo danger? Do Stranger know? danger. I have to my this is not a typo. Not a typo. This is real life. Holy Moses! I'm reading oh, what Debo wrote in the rundown here. I'm kind of worried now. Who are we up against, Debo? I mean, who are these sad saps? Uh, a lot of our fellow colleagues. Oh, okay. Checks out. <laughs> so, like, uh, Cover 3, All Things Covered, um, Samson. Is that, is that the, the neighborhood? Uh, fantasy Football Today, Cover 3, First Cut Golf, and Soccer We Trust. Fantasy oh, Baseball yeah. Today. CBS, uh, you know, dominated this category to an wow. extent. Wow. So is this, is this like a podcast award created by CBS and we're trying to like. You would think that. so, but no. So in terms of popularity of sport, Pick 6 should have a good chance. In terms of popularity of host, yeah, that changes things. A winning, all right, here's, here, are the, here are all the finals. And this is just all CBS. Uh, oh God, this is a winning mindset. I don't know. Who's that? I don't know that one. Sure, they have right. a great. Oh, podcast. that's cool. Uh, Paraly- oh, that's cool. It's a Paralympic podcast, but that's not through CBS. I don't believe, right? No, it's not. Cover three college football. We all know them. Our pals, uh, Chip, Tom. Yeah, I'm doing for them. Go ahead. I might too. ESPN Daily. Yeah, crap. That's Paula. Uh, um, Pablo yeah. Torres. Pablo Torres. Yes, that's a that's that's a good podcast. Fantasy baseball today. Fantasy football today. Yeah, those are meh. Game face. <laughs> I don't know what game face. That is. feels like something that'd be Persco's podcast, Game Face. <laughs> um, how how college athletes can build their brand is a finalist. Hmm. Um, in soccer, we trust a U.S. soccer podcast. I'm assuming that's that's us, baby. Yeah, Morning combat. Morning combat. That's, that's us. us. Yeah. Pick six NFL. Boom. And the first cut podcast. So I'm a little nervous, but that's a winnable. That's <laughs> that's kind of winnable. Let me ask you. Uh, better chance you finish in first, a better chance you finish in last. I mean, by the way, I'm saying you now that you could finish in last, not us. Well, it's we. If you vote in the first phase, there's a chance you can help us out and vote again. A quarter of the listeners that voted in July will have gotten an email from the People's Choice, meaning you can go vote again in this stage. You have until September 13th, and if you have a vote, we'd love the support. Let's see if I got one. How would I know if I got one? Where would they, where would it come from? Podcast choice. can't even find this mm, not that's not good to me really embarrassing when i can't i i missed the email that's instructing me to vote for my own podcast <laughs> but it's probably i'm probably gonna miss it aren't i oh uh, yeah i would i would go with that all right um so podcast awards i'm gonna read the rest of the email while you're searching i want me to read the rest of it the rest of the debos oh yeah why don't you yeah um yeah, so the quarter of the listeners that vote in July will have gotten an email from the People's Choice. Meaning I, you just, could, I just said that. I'm rereading it for those who were who lost their train of thought. I mean, you can go vote again in this stage, and that's what you're looking for right now, I believe. You have until September 13th, five weeks. And mm. if you have a vote, we'd love the support. Remember, <laughs> elections have consequences, people. So <laughs> vote accordingly. Hey, hey, remember, elections have consequences. For instance... If we win, the, if we win, oh God, I can't wait to say I do this. If we, if we win this award, if I, if we are named the 2022 People's Choice Podcast Award Champion, 
So if you get a vote, vote. I, I said I'll get a tattoo, and I will get a tattoo. Uh, by the way, quick tattoo update. Um, uh, what time's the party on Tuesday night, Debo? Assuming I'm in Nashville by that point. Uh, five Central. Okay, and it's over like at eight or something. I think the tattoo parlor will probably be closed at eight. I'm happy to do it Wednesday morning. Mm. Are we? Are you flying out Thursday or Wednesday? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> I'm uh, in and out of there, baby. <laughs> we'll open up the shop. Uh, I think tattoo parlors generally open. I had found a tattoo parlor in Why Nashville. I'm back till Thursday. Why am I doing that? I don't know who made your thing. Mm. I'm like flying in Monday and leaving Thursday. Oh well. Um, yeah, there are a couple of tattoo parlors. I'll click. The, I'll check the times, but I'm happy to do it in the morning. I'm looking at one now. Uh, let's see. Uh, they don't open till noon. I don't know how long it takes to get a tattoo. None of us know. Um, but anyway, what I was going to say, Debo, you look at that snoopy tattoo and determine where we need to put the requisite ryan finley information and then i think the i think the the ryan finley's number well i mean i mentioned the stat line yeah so think about that i'll do it and then we'll make magic happen i'm a little i'm a little i mean i I think we could win that um all right you gotta do a better job of selling it i'll say that i'm a little little worried about uh about uh about this tattoo did um oh by the way uh and somebody uh they're asking how did all things covered not make it all things covered did actually make the finalist in best black hosted podcast okay best asian hosted podcast best i don't see a so tattoo parlors in general appear to open at noon so i'm looking around this thing <laughs> and they typically close at seven so if I'd only gotten there earlier, perhaps I could have done it on Monday night, but wasn't meant to be, apparently. But we'll figure it out. Not having this actually, you know, it was actually, this is like finally the year that fantasy football today is going to win this. They've never won it. I don't have they won it, Diva? Uh, fantasy footballers has has owned this category in, in recent memory. The, the the so there was a couple of podcasts that just stand out that didn't make the finals here. Uh around the NFL. Fantasy footballers and uh, ESPN fantasy football or whatever the fantasy football today. What is fantasy footballers? What's that from? Which it's those? Um, they're independent. I think they're still independent. There's like a couple of dudes who just started up a fantasy football podcasting that's wildly popular. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean the fact that those didn't make it give us a much better chance of winning. I really don't want a tattoo. I don't. Something I kind of don't want to win this. Um, but here we are. What are you gonna do? Go vote for us. Some yeah. news. We start. With, I guess we're going to start with trade request. You want to start with trade request? You want to start with these injuries? It's like your underwear. It's up to you. It's my let's, buddy. Start, let's start with the injuries. because I think My buddy Chris Tanner, you said in high school. South Lake Makai Becton is going to be done for the season. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mike Garoppolo just reported that it's a, an avulsion of the kneecap, I believe is what he said, which sounds like a season-ending situation. So let me ask you this. Because I was sort of thinking, and, and like, I, I and, and I'm not saying – I mean, they, you can't predict injuries, um, but the Jets had the fourth overall pick, and they took Sauce Gardner. On the table were Ikea Kwanu, Evan Neal, and Charles Cross. They knew at the time that they, they were hoping at the time, I think, that um, Makai Becton would be fine and could be their left tackle of the future. But he, you know, he's he's dealt with injuries. He's dealt with you know uh, some weight fluctuations and. You know, you had to you had to wonder like what you know would they would they been I think at the time it was fair to say should they have gotten a um, an offensive tackle with either the fourth or tenth pick and then moved Mackay back into the right side or at least given themselves some you know additional depth and and um, upside on the offensive line by drafting one instead of going with a cornerback. Now Sauce Gardner might very well be awesome, but uh, it does seem like Mackay Becton is. I mean, at this point. Yeah, I mean, he certainly can't pick up his fifth-year option after this season. Yeah, it feels yeah like- no, like you said, you can't predict injuries. They drafted Elijah Bear Tucker in the first round last year. He's he kick inside uh, after playing some outside at USC, and he's been good. Um, and the expectation was that Makai Beckton would be back. Well, it didn't work out, and I'm sure if you had a redraft, you, you could address that need. But Dwayne Brown's been mentioned as a possible short-term solution. They drafted Max Mitchell. Uh, who plays on the right side. They have George Fant, who, who played pretty well last year uh, at left tackle. Um, Connor McDermott's currently the listed as a starter. 
but Max Mitchell from Louisiana, he's a good player. Now, whether he's ready to start, that's another matter, and that's a huge drop-off in terms of projected ability when you're trying to take care of, of Zach Wilson. But I, I don't have any issue with Sauce Gardner and Garrett Wilson with those two, for, and Jermaine Johnson, for that matter. Their draft was actually a really good draft, but is working under the assumption that Brees Hall, too. Jeremy Ruckert as well. I mean, go down the list. I just mentioned Max, uh, Max Mitchell working under the assumption that Makai would be healthy. He wasn't healthy for most of the last year. That This is not great. And, you know, revisions history. Yeah. You probably draft an offensive lineman instead of either Garrett or, or sauce, but that's not where they're at. And hopefully one of these other guys can step up. Uh, yeah. Not great situation. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Beckton was awesome. His rookie season when he was, when he was out on the field and playing. Um, yeah. I, I, I loved him coming out of Louisville. Thought he was just a, you know, potentially dominant offensive line. I think he was called the dancing bear 40 billion times leading up to that draft. It's just now you, you know, it's fan on the left side and I guess either Max Mitchell or Connor McDermott on the right side. And that's, it, 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 it I don't know. It, I felt like I was getting a little bit sort of kind of getting high on the jets in terms of their maybe upside of Zach Wilson took a step forward, but it, this t- kind of takes a little, like a, a significant, bit of the air out of that. I mean, like, you know, Corey Davis, Elijah Moore, and Garrett Wilson is a fun group of receivers. Brees Hall, Michael Carter, you know, they've added my boy Zonovan Knight. Like, they've got some juice in the backfield, and, um, you know, maybe the defense gets better with Carl Olsen healthy and Jermaine Johnson and Sauce Gardner added. Well, the and, defense is going to be good. I think this team is, is fine. The biggest question still remains Zach Wilson. You would like to have had Mackay Becton there. That looks to be that well, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's just harder for Zach Wilson to take a step forward without McCoy. yeah. Connor McDermott, he, he's a right tackle. Uh, you know, he if he's replacement level, that's a starting point. If he's if you get Dwayne Brown in there, that also gives you some some wiggle room. So there are options. I mean, it's not best case scenario, but it's not worst case scenario either. <laughs> it's it's not best case scenario. That's that seems fair. No, it's I think it's a little. I, short it, of they were the they scored eighteen point two points per game last year and gave it the most points in football. Like. Yeah, I think the quarterback might have had something to do with that early on, at least. Well, he only yeah yeah, and he he didn't he didn't play great. No, and so I was looking at some of his game logs. You're like, oh my god, Zach Wilson. Like, let's see what there's one. I mean, he got hurt too, so you got to take that into consideration. But <laughs> and he went. Let's see where's the where's the really bad. Oh yeah, the final week final week of the season, they got blasted by Buffalo, twenty seven ten. He went seven of twenty for eighty seven yards and a touchdown. Is that good? No. Completing 35% of your passes, is that good? No. No, also not good. I'm reading, I'm just reading some comments about Jedrick Wills worked out with him this offseason talking about uh, the loss there. So, yeah, not great. Not great. Not great. Would you take the over under on the Jets? Five and a half wins. I'm sort of high on the Jets. Um, I'm going to go over. I think they win more games than the Giants as well. Do they win more games than the Patriots? <laughs> no, no, although the Patriots offense apparently looks like doo-doo with Matt Patricia as the quote-unquote uh, play caller. Um, so, you know, I don't know if you can put too much stock into that or not because it's training camp and we're halfway through and the defense is going to be pretty good, or is there are there legitimate concerns now that Josh McDaniel is in Las Vegas? Jason Kelsey is undergoing an elbow procedure. But a source just told Adam Schefter that, quote, the full expectation is Kelsey will be ready and healthy week one. That's a pretty big deal. Jason Kelsey, no, J- Jason Kelsey is a, like, it, it's crazy how you can sort of put together these, th- um, these thought processes. Like, you, you, put, you put together your thought process when it comes to like each team, you're like, oh, like I'm kind of high on this team. Then all of a sudden, like one thing happens, you're like, oh, you know what? Maybe I'm not so high on that team. You know what I mean? Like this is like the Beckton injury. You're like, ooh, maybe I should not be. Yeah, I'm. But he didn't play last year. They sucked. But I mean, that that's that gives. I mean, I would be more concerned if actually probably if Elijah Vera Tucker got hurt because he actually played last year. But in terms of Travis Kelsey, I'm fine with that. He's going to be. If he's ready in week one. He's ready in week one. I mean, if they lost him for four weeks or something, that that would be a concern because Tyreek Hill's gone, and um, you know, we don't know how these other. Uh, oh, Jason Kelsey, not Travis Kelsey. Oh, Jason Kelsey. Oh, that's fine too. Sorry. I just heard Kelsey and I was thinking, yeah, that's fine. Right, if he's right. back in week one. But even if Jason Kelsey's back, and Debo sort of talked about maybe he retires, maybe he doesn't, but they drafted Cam Jurgens out of Nebraska. And, you know, ideally you don't want a rookie playing in week one, but a Cam Jurgens is a guy who could step in there. Um, Landon Dickerson played center at Alabama. I don't know 
what the breakdown has been at, at training camp in terms of them, them working at center. But that's an option as well, even if you need someone in week one. And he played it at a high level. The injuries were the only thing that, that were the, the concerns with Landon Dickerson. So, you know, of, of all the positions to, to be concerned about, even Travis Kelsey, for that matter, I think Jason Kelsey um, getting a little time off as, a, as an old timer in, in NFL terms uh, to heal up. That's fine. I don't I don't think there's any concern there. Do you have any concern about Jason Kelsey elbow injury? No. Zero. No. I mean, he's proven to kind of be one of the nastiest and, and kind of toughest players. It's got to be super Wait, Frisco? Yes. Super, yes. super serious for him to miss any time That's true. Um, with him. I, I do think they have a good case for best offensive line in the league without him. That's Ooh. that's not the case. So I hope he's there. Okay, I agree. Yeah, I don't think it's a huge deal. Um. <laughs> so huge, in fact, that Brenton just dropped out of the podcast momentarily. I look forward to hearing the reasons why, Debo. So what else are we talking about here? We got more uh, injuries. You want to jump oh. to Joe Burrow? Do you believe uh, any, oh, any reason for concern there? How much is Breach panicking right now? So Joe Burrow's timetable has been extended. It was only supposed to be a few weeks. Welcome back, Bree, uh, Brenson. We're talking about Joe Burrow going from a few weeks with the appendectomy uh, to being out a few more weeks. A breach uh, breach story, by the way. Yeah. It's a four-minute read, so he must have gotten into his feelings because that's longer. Breach is usually like a 30-second read. Good Lord. Read. That is an insanely long read. Yeah, he must have been trying to rationalize that this isn't a bad thing. So during an interview on the In the Trenches podcast, which is part of the Bengals radio network, uh, Joe Burrow's dad said it might be a few weeks before his son is able to return to the field. Set him back. Jimmy Burrow. I love this dad's name's Jimmy. Set of the surgery. Jimmy. I, I bet this Dave Lapham guy emailed Breach about writing this story. All right. I don't know if that's true or not, but you have to show people what's going on behind the curtain. I bet he begged Breach. So happened to, <laughs> happened to me was July 27th. Uh, estimate at the time was that he'd be able to return to the field after one to four weeks. And uh, if Jimmy Burrow's new timeline is accurate, according to Breach, that means it could still be a few weeks before Joe's practicing again. They might have him back on the field until the end of August or even the beginning of September. So, I, I mean, that's the concern on some yeah. level. By the way, this uh, uh, Dave Lapham was a teammate of Jim Breach. Oh, cool. Oh, uh, yeah. This is definitely a, hey, see if your son will write a, yep. a four-minute read. Breach doesn't do four-minute reads. He does not do four-minute reads. Um. Jimmy Burrow also noted that his son's appendix issue kind of came out of nowhere. Um, I think appendix issues typically come out of nowhere. I don't know if that's a surprise. I don't think you uh, typically plan to have an appendectomy. But anyway, if it bleeds into September, pardon the pun, that's something you got to think about. Long term, it's fine. I mean, clearly they're in a much better situation than the Browns and whatever's going to happen to Sean Watson in terms of availability. But you, you want Joe Burrow to be out there and playing with the ones and and sort of continuing to build on that. Um, I always have to look. Off the top of your head, who's the backup quarterback in, in Cincinnati? Uh, I think Brandon one, Allen. I was going to say it's one of the Allens, I think. Yeah. So Brandon Allen started football games. I don't think you want him to play. Uh, that seems like not best-case scenario. Right, because Jake Browning's there. And I think Jake Jake, Jake Browning got to Washington Debo because I said previously I thought he went to Louisville. I think that's where he went. Um, but that, so that would why, be the, Why is this appendectomy a bigger deal than a normal appendectomy? This is so, this is something odd about this. It might be just a few extra weeks that they want him to rest. Because I think typically when you have an appendectomy as a as a normal person, you can go to work. But when you're running around and getting hit and torquing your body, that probably is not good for the the healing process when it's around your your midsection. So maybe that's what it is. Um, but yeah, no, I, no, no, no. I mean, appendectomies are pretty standard. Like it's just there's a pretty yeah. But again, if you have an appendectomy tomorrow you can probably go to work the next day because this is your job. Your job isn't doing jumping jacks and sprinting up and down the field and running away from 300 pound people. I, I know, but, but Jimmy Burrow, here's the quote. He said, it set him back, but he seems to be getting better every day. And hopefully here in a few weeks, we'll be, he'll, we'll be back out on the field. Maybe he was like stretching and he, he popped a popped a seam or something. I don't know, but I'm not, I'm not worried about it. It's not like it affects his arms or his knees or his brain. It's just as, but as uh, Breach points out, John Walford Rams backup quarterback came back in 13 days. Yeah, but John Walford's clearly tougher than than Joe Burrow. I think that's the. Oh, ho, ho! 
the same Joe Burrow I'm about to get a Snoopy tattoo up. Uh, 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 <laughs> at one point in his interview with Lapham, yeah, Breach mentions Lapham several times here. This is there's something that was part of the payment process. There's something going on here with um, <laughs> Jimmy Burrow called Joe's operation quote a major surgery. There's always a danger and complications for a surgery like that. Jimmy said. Joe's just got to listen to his doctors and trainers over at the facility and take it easy. He's not one to kind of take it easy, but he's got to, and it will be best for long run if he makes sure he does what he's supposed to do. Jimmy Burrow uh, sounds like a doctor, but I think he's like a coach, isn't he? He was asked if his if Burrow's appendix had actually ruptured, and he refused to confirm or deny that. Uh, the recovery time for a ruptured appendix is generally a few weeks longer than for there you go. it didn't rupture. There you go. Oh, so it must have ruptured before they got it out. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, that 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 makes a lot more sense. I'm not oh. sure Jimmy okay. said when asked about the rupture. We heard from a lot of different doctors and heard a lot of different things. I'll let Joe, if he wants to tell you any of the details, I'll let him tell you the details. So in other words, it almost certainly ruptured. Well, yeah, we don't know. So okay. jo Jimmy Burrow. He's asked for a few weeks and he won't, he won't confirm or deny it. I mean, that seems like pretty obvious. Jimmy Burrow uh, went to college in Nebraska. He was a eighth round pick in 1976 of... Who did he get drafted by? Um, somehow can't find it. But anyway. Who did, who, did, who did Jimmy Burrow get drafted by? Oh, Green Bay. Sorry. There it is. I was looking for Yeah, because I was trying to look. Because he, he, the way you, some of the quotes you read, maybe something like he, he was a, a medical, uh, in the medical field. But he, he's a former player. Played in the, in the CFL for, for quite a while. No, he's, um, just, he's just Joe Burrow's dad. Joe Burrow's dad. And he also was coached for a while, and I think we knew that during the draft process because we talked about that a lot. That's right. Uh, Jameis Winston tweaked his foot. You're uh, your your future MVP winner. I know you're high on. Jim yeah, the only person that likes Jameis more than me is Emory Hunt. He yeah, calls him really? Famous Jameis, <laughs> which I sort of love. That's what everybody always called him Famous Jameis. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought that was an Emory thing. No, I think it's the, the, the date back to like college. Uh, he's going to miss right. quote a few. He's going to quote miss a few days of practice. Will not play in the preseason opener, according to Jeff Duncan of the New Orleans Times Picayune. Um, and that Saturday is their opener, uh, but it is not expected to be a serious injury. Yeah, much better than suffering an ACL. So that's good news. And again, how many of these quarterbacks that aren't first or second year quarterbacks are going to play anyway in the first three pieces? Oh, pre None, right? Exactly. And this is, <laughs> I'm laughing because it's half serious, half joking, but this is primetime Andy Dalton territory. You throw him out there in the first three weeks of preseason, let him take a beating, bring in Ian Book, and then keep Jameis healthy uh, for when the actual season starts. So, yeah. Uh, less concerned about Jameis than I am about Joe Burrow. And I'm not that concerned about Joe Burrow. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I'm much less concerned about Jameis. Yeah, Joe Burrow a little more concerning. I don't, you don't like that. Um, I was going to say, hey, we'll, we'll get back to him. Uh, Ty, oh yeah. By the way, the um, the Saints. Can you do you know who the backup quarterback for the Saints is? Yeah, I just said Andy Dalton and, okay. and Ian Book. <laughs> I wouldn't. I was looking. I was looking at something. Else. I was googling Josh Jacobs. Um, any, any reason for them to look at Jimmy Garoppolo? Who the Saints? For what? To be a quarterback coach? Why would you bring him in when you have Andy Dalton and, and the an guy you drafted last year? upgrade over James Winston. Uh, I would argue that that's not true. Jameis played well last year. No, he, he played fine. Relative he, to he, previous he, Jameis football, I thought he played well. Yeah, I thought he was okay. Okay. Well, you you bring in Jimmy Garoppolo and see how that goes. I think it would be an upgrade. Um, uh, the... Uh, oh, Jimmy Garoppolo. By the way, speaking of which, the 49ers posted their depth chart, and he's on the he's the fourth stringer. Yeah, I don't think I don't even know if he's is he practicing. I don't think so. Yeah, I think they just had him sitting out so they can figure out what to do with him. Yeah, well, at least uh, he made the made the list. Tyler Linderbaum is, had his injury disputed, so he has a he has a list frank injury according to. I believe Ian Rappaport and Mike Garofalo follow of NFL media, but um, John Harbaugh says a foot injury, foot issue, but it's not in, not a list Frank. That's not true. It's not true. It's not a list Frank sprain. There's a ligament. It's not that ligament. It's a different ligament. So he's had the list Frank before. There's no separation. Mm. There's no list Frank sprain per se. That's my understanding. You know, I'm not a doctor, but I play one in press conferences, as you know, but that's what I was told. Sounds like Jimmy Burrow. Did he say I actually play one in press conferences? Yeah, it's That's pretty funny. Okay, uh, well, I mean, all we can go on is is what we're told, and then we'll see what the recovery time is. If he's out for 
a year, then it might be something more serious than what Harbaugh's yeah. letting on. Yeah, if he misses a full year, it's definitely a loss. <laughs> yeah, if he's back um, sooner than that, then we'll reevaluate. But that's a huge loss because the whole idea was to shore up the center of that that um, offense. They drafted him in the first round. They drafted um, the safety Kyle Hamilton from Notre Dame in the first round. They crushed their draft on paper. David Ajabo, who also had an injury. At 42 um, fourth-round picks. Yeah, and they didn't trade one of them. So you hopefully Tyler Linderbaum's back soon. Um, in fact, there were some some folks that like Cam Jurgens, who we just talked about as a backup to Kelsey in, in Philadelphia, better than Linderbaum in terms of value for where you might take them in the draft. I think Cam ended up going to the second round, uh, day two for sure, and Linderbaum went, went late in round one. Um, slightly undersized like he was you know sub 300 and sometimes that, that bothers people short arms but that's why he plays center he was a wrestler um so uh <laughs> i'm laughing at breach breach is piping in, in our little chat here dave lapham is this guy he says but um yeah this is a huge this is the probably one of the most concerning injuries we talked about in addition to, to mckay back to news yeah it's a big deal i mean like it, the ravens have um, a legitimate Super Bowl opportunity, I think. In a, in a, in a under- is Lamar going to get paid before the season? Um, I'm guessing. I don't think so. Yeah, boy, it's final year, right? Oh, yeah. Fifth year option? No. Oh, yes, this is the fifth year option. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, you might want to look into that. Uh, I would pay him. I don't think he. I don't think they're just. They're not. They're not getting there. Um. All right. That's all the injury news. Let's take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll discuss trade rumors next. So, Roquan Smith has officially requested a trade from the Bears, and I can't say I blame him because the Bears are stinky. Um, yeah, man, that team. Here, I was talking to your buddy Adam Gold earlier today, and let me put this out there to you. We sort of talked about this. So, I'll mention a few teams, and you tell me where the Bears slot in in terms of progress or lack of progress from the 21, 21 season to the 2022 season. So, Jaguars, the Lions, the Jets, and the Bears. Rank those teams for me in terms of optimism or lack of optimism over the last seven months. Uh, say them again. The Jets, the Bears, the Jaguars, and the uh, Lions. You want to add the Falcons in there? Yeah, I, don't, I haven't paid attention to the Falcons. I don't know what they're up to, but sure. Uh, I mean, I think the Bears are... The Bears and the Falcons for me are the least optimistic teams. I Bears, think that's right. If if I was if I was ranking like like if so like number one is most optimistic and thirty two is least optimistic, I would say thirty two is probably the Bears. Uh, I don't disagree with that. Like last year, the Lions won three. Last year, the Bears won six. I think the Lions are winning more games than the Bears, and they may double them up in in the same way I just said six and three. Uh, Breach is like Breach is panicking in the in the chat. He's like he's getting a little angry. You can tell. What's he, he what's he angry about? He's like, you know, I wasn't forced to write that. No. Um, Your question way, uh, is journalist and integrity. Yep, he didn't have any. Uh, Roquan Smith, by the way, wrote uh, to the city of Chicago and all the Bears fans worldwide. I've officially requested a trade. Just writing these words is deeply painful. And he pointed out that he, you know, he grew up making County Georgia, playing linebacker. He never imagined being drafted in the top 10 by the Bears. I'm a homegrown Bear. Dream came true for me the opportunity to put that Bears helmet on, wear the same jersey that the legendary linebackers did. It's an indescribable feeling. Continues on for a bit and says, unfortunately, the new front office regime doesn't value me here. They refuse to negotiate in good faith. Every step of this journey has been, quote, take it or leave it. The deal sent to me is one that would be bad for myself and for the entire linebacker market if I signed it. I've been trying to get something done that's a fair, it's fair since April, but their focus has been on trying to take advantage of me. Pretty wild. I think that's um I think that's really interesting. And and we can get to the Roquan stuff too, but like to get to the specifics of where he might end up landing. But what I find interesting about that in particular is does this mean that the this new Bears regime is definitely in on Justin Fields? Because I mean, I would say Roquan Smith is their second best young player on the team. I mean, maybe their best. Maybe he might be their best asset on the entire roster. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I, if if you want to take Justin Fields over Roquan Smith, sure, I'm fine with that. You know, quarterback position and all that. But like. I mean, J- Jalen Johnson's good. Um, I don't know if Robert Quinn's in that conversation. Yeah, it's close. I mean, they, Robert Quinn's like th- older than you are. It's it's hard to make a case that you know because there's so many few there's so few good players on this team 
Yeah, sure, fine. I'm not going to push back. I mean, Cole Komet hasn't quite lived up to expectations. David Montgomery hasn't been used in a manner in which, uh, you know, exhibits all the things that he's good at, so on and so forth. So, yeah, sure, fine. I think what was most interesting upon reading uh, Roquan's comments on the social media, wherever he put it up, is that he said, look, I love everything about Chicago, the fans, the history, the legacy, yada, yada, yada. But here's the deal, fans. I try to negotiate with these guys, and they lowball me, and peace out. So there's no questioning where he's coming from. There's no pouting like Kyler sort of did when he took everyone's name off his social media. Although he's not being passive aggressive, he's like, "Look, they won't, they won't deal with me." And this puts the ball in the Bears' court in terms Absolutely. of how are you going to respond when it comes to the PR battle. I mean, it, it worked out for Kyler, but Kyler plays quarterback, um, and I think Roquan. I suppose if they came to an agreement, he would be happy to stay. But right now he's he's pissed off, and that sometimes happens um, with the business part of this. And there are plenty of other teams. So he makes nine point seven million this year, I think. The final year was I think it's the fifth year option. Um, half the teams have about that much money in salary cap space. You can do some massage in the salary cap to make it happen. But I would imagine there'd be plenty of suitors to get someone who's mid twenties in their prime and a difference maker. I would imagine Justin Fields would like to keep Roquan around because. Justin Fields need everyone, everyone in a brother who's half decent on that team to stay. By the way, I was talking about um, this today for I did like a quick forty five second thing for HQ. I called Justin Fields Justin Leonard. That's how old I am. Mm. Justin Leonard, like the golfer, like the golfer. The gol- I don't know where that. Oh, I, you know what? I was thinking because I was comparing. You're Shaquille, probably about Shaquille Leonard, and and it takes me two beats to remember Shaquille's first name. So it's Shaquille yeah. Leonard, and then that Justin Fields. I call him Justin Leonard. But here's the thing. If you want Shaquille Leonard money, that's around, I think, what is it? 17, 19? 19.7. CJ Mosley makes 17, which... That's that's a terrible contract. Yeah, it feels like a lot of money for a guy who, who is probably on the downside of a good career and battled injuries. I remember the, remember the, the old, old regime signed him originally. Yeah, but to your point about whether Justin Fields is in a long-term plans, that's the interesting one. Um, well, yeah. on, the, on, the, on, the, on the cash with... Um, uh, Demart says Joe Clinton nothing about his production. But this is a conversation about best young player on the team. Like he's the best young player on the team. Okay, I mean Jalen Johnson's good, but yeah, that's that's fine. I'm not going to push back on that. Yeah, I mean Roquan. The, the, I think the issue here is that Roquan. All right, let, what, all right. Let's you play. I'll play Roquan. You play Ryan Pace or Ryan Paul. No, it's so yeah. annoying. Yeah, it's so annoying that they're RP and RP and Ryan Ryan, and then like they're and the coaches are both Matts. Ridiculous. Yeah, they're um, cool. So you're real Ryan Poles and I'm Roquan Smith. Oh, I'm Ryan Poles. Okay. I want $19.8 million per year. What is your counter offer? Uh, I will give you. Oh, you're, and you're supposed to lowball me here. Oh, yeah. I will give you Matt Milano money. <laughs> $10.4 million. I would guess the Bears are. Matt Milano, me... by the way, is a really good player. But yeah, that's what that's where I'm at right now. Um, I would guess the Bears. By the way, Rokon Smith is probably like he's making nine oh, seven. Oh, that's his full contract. Never mind. Um, yeah, he's if he's making nine. Yeah, I mean, I, I just I wonder what they offered him. Well, he said it was it was not great. I bet they offered him less than C.J. Mosley. How old is he? Do you have that in front of you? He said be twenty twenty five. Yeah, I'm gonna. I mean, get out of here. Now, look, you can maybe his agent countered, and maybe they they stood firm with that number, whatever that number we think it is for the Bears, in which case I get it. You can be pissed off about it. But, um, you know, you can also say, no, I want 19, I want $1 more than, than Shaquille Leonard. And they don't have to pay that. And that's their prerogative as well. They could choose but to move you on. Find, you could find a place where you can, like, you could find a, 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 a some sort of compromise here. But, well, if you not, if you want to be the highest paid linebacker, and the Bears might be of the opinion that linebackers aren't worth what they're being paid currently. I mean, safeties and linebackers are sort of overvalued. You can twenty million dollars a year is a lot for a, a linebacker, and maybe that's what they how they feel, especially given that this team has. I mean, we crushed the Bears for not drafting any wide receivers except for Bayless Jones, and they drafted a bunch of defensive guys. They drafted a safety and a cornerback. Um, so maybe like we, we want to reallocate that money. The counter argument is that the. Um... That, that Roquan Smith is the fourth highest paid player on the Bears, and as such, they should um, double a salary. Maybe they don't want to do that. I mean, it's like Robert Quinn is the highest paid, or has the biggest cap hit on the Bears. Like, it's, it's, I can see both sides. I'm fine with Roquan getting his because he deserves it. Yeah, given the market. But if the Bears are 
going in a different direction, quote unquote, and they want to get better. I don't know if it, let, I'll put it this way. How many more wins does Roquan Smith give you when you double salary? <laughs> it gives you the same number of wins. Right. So, I mean, so, I, I, I mean, look, there's a very good chance that I, I think Roquan Smith probably understands because he's in his fifth year option as well. Right. And he's going to get franchise tagged. If he, if they, if they don't trade him, he's going to, he's going to play this season, play well, he's going to get franchise tagged. And then he's going to have to, and you know, it's, it's just a tough spot to be in. Like but I, there, I, I would imagine there are teams that, uh, I mean, the Falcons are a team that should be interested. They need help on defense. Uh, no, the Falcons are Cowboys just signed Leighton Van Der Sch, that one year deal. So there's, I, I think you got to be a team that's a, uh, like reasonably competitive to, tr to trade an asset for or if you have a ton of cap space. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, understand. Like if you're the, like if you're the Falcons, I, I don't look at the Falcons and think, okay, th they're going to be very competitive over the length of a, uh, a four, four game or a four year, uh, Roquan Smith deal. You know what I mean? So our buddy Sully wrote about this on, on CBS you can read it there, but he mentioned some, some possible landing spots. I mentioned Dallas. He had that. The dolphins is a team that's on the up. At least on paper, the Patriots, that feels like a Patriots move. The Broncos and the Ravens first overall. Those are all teams that are in the mix. Um, I don't know where the salary cap situation for all these teams are, but again, you can massage the cap to, to make it work for you. But I think all those landing spots in, in terms of upgrading your situation, Roquan might be happy with that. And clearly he, he needs to get paid. He ain't showing up to pay for nine. This is very code. convenient. Guess who's talking right now? Roquan. Ryan Poles. Dang it. We have to do what's best for the team, but my intention is to sign Roquan Smith. Oh, okay. Well, we'll see, right? Yeah, I think that's just him. I think that's him doing the PR battle too. Like, in other words, he's saying we're not gonna, we're not gonna sign Roquan to a twenty million dollar deal. But you know, we want. To, my intention is to sign him, right? Like when it was Pete Carroll said, our intention isn't to trade. We have no yeah. intention of trading Russell Wilson. If, anytime you bring up the word intention. We know what you mean. Yeah, you're 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 saying that you are willing to trade Roquan Smith. Um, Josh Jacobs was briefly mentioned as a possible trade candidate, uh, and, and the 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 logic was somebody actually asked me about this yesterday. But um, you know, he he played a ton in the Hall of Fame game, which is very bizarre. I mean, people were like, "What? Why is Josh Jacobs out there? What is going on?" Um, and there was some speculation that he might have been uh, showcasing. Jacobs for a possible trade asked about that on Monday. Josh Rodino said, JJ's a guy. We know what he's done. We have a lot of confidence in JJ. He did well with his opportunities. We have no desire to do that at all as in a trade. So they drafted Zamir white. He played alongside James cook at Georgia. Um, by the way, that draft class, the first round, by the, pick. Way, by the way, again, intention, no desire. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean yeah, we have no desire to trade him. However, Josh, <laughs> Josh Jacobs, Cleveland Farrell, and then Jonathan Abram. Those were the three first round picks in that, in that absolute disaster. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're not getting more in the sixth round pick for him if you trade him. And again, I don't know what the intent, the intentions, quote unquote, um, of the Raiders are if they want to move from him or not. Um, by the way, let's see. Um, Scott Fitterer, the GM of the. Well, they didn't pick up his fifth year option, by the way. Yeah. The, uh, none of the guys they did are the, the three. Yeah. yeah. And, but I mean, so this is the final year of his deal. I like. He's a 24 year old running back. I don't see why you would trade him. Just, I mean, if you think you're going to be competitive, keep him around and just run him into the ground and let him go. Yeah, they have Brandon Bolden, who came over from New England, who's more of a sort of a part time back. As Mira White, I mentioned Kenyon Drake, um, Scott Fitterer, by the way, had to pull Sam Darnold to the side a few days ago and tell him that the 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 trade uh, mentioned on Twitter that he was a trade candidate was in fact not true. <laughs> Um, just to, to uh, put a, a bow on on, on, the, on top of this trade conversation. I'm just giggling at the idea of like so, another team trading for Sam Darnold. It was the Broncos. So, oh. Um, oh. But there really was a rumor. There was a rumor on Twitter, and Scott Fitter saw it. Sam Darnold said he hadn't even seen it yet, but he appreciated it. Fitter put plenty of side. It feels like Baker's going to win that job. Our buddy Joe Person wrote about that on Tuesday morning for the Athletic, but you know, we'll see. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. That, that's. What a bizarre, that would be a bizarre, pretty sure. Hmm. Why would they do that? They didn't. <laughs> who, 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 uh, who sent that rumor out? Do you know? Uh, if you look in Slack, I'll give you a hint. Ah! No comments. So anyway, that's just uh, in addition to the other trade situations we're talking about. 
And uh, yeah, that's a good call. And Kareem Hunt also, uh, did he request a trade? And the Broncos said no, or the Browns said I, no. I think JJ said he was holding in um, after. I think he practiced a few times, and then he said, "I'm going to hold in." And I don't know what came of it after that. I lost. I, I got distracted by other stuff. Uh, Cleveland.com was first first report of the deal. Uh, he's seeking a contract extension. Has requested a trade from the Browns, but the team has privately declined that request. Sources confirmed to ESPN. Well, they sort of need him, especially with the quarterback situation in flux. So Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, Dearness Johnson, and then they drafted Jerome Ford. They also have Demetri Felton, who's uh, Ford and Felton, Felton are sort of similar type backs. But you have two workhorses, and then you have a change of pace in Dearness, and then you have uh, sort of guys who can catch the ball, and speedsters and Felton and Ford. I wouldn't move on from Hunt. I wouldn't pay him either because he's a running back. I'm not sure where he, he's yeah. – he is on his contract journey, but is, is the final year of his deal? Is that a two-year, twelve million dollar deal? Oh, oh no, no, no. Uh, uh-uh. uh. Yeah, you're I, you're you're splitting yeah, carries. Yeah, he's yeah. You have. I mean, you can't pay two running backs. They've already paid Nick Chubb, right? Um, I think they did. I feel like they did. Um, you, there's no way you can have two. It's not 1993. Yes, no. You can't have two running backs on the rosters on relatively big contracts. That's right, because Chubb was a second round pick, so they had to pay him uh, earlier. Yeah, so they don't know what's going on with the quarterback situation. They don't have time to worry about Kareem Hunt. So Kareem Hunt can hold in or hold out or hold sideways. I, th- I think they're going to roll with what they have. If he doesn't play, he doesn't play. Uh, again, not their biggest concern. Nick so Chubb's, I get- uh, Nick Chubb's sent an extension uh, last year, early August. Yeah, no, that, sound, that sounds familiar. So it's $36.6 million, $36. million deal for three years. Also, uh, $12 million signing bonus. Not a crazy contract, but like if you're Kareem Hunt, the problem is that Kareem Hunt is probably asking for something similar to Nick Chubb, and the Browns are just not going to pay. Like you said, they're not going to pay two running backs. That he can't be asking for that. It has to be less than that. Well, I mean, he just took two two years, twelve million dollars, and he, and he's played well. I would guess, but he, you know, he is he's also you know a part time running back. Like it's you can't. It, 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 it all sort of makes sense. Like he's been in Cleveland for three years. You know, John Dorsey brought him over, remember, after because when he led the league in rushing as a rookie, and then he had mm-hmm. his off field stuff. Um, he, the, John Dorsey took a chance on him. He was very much a part time player in 2019. And then there's been, you know, uh, he was hurt a lot of last year, but was very good in 2020. I think, he, I think, you know, at the age of 20, he'll turn just turned 27. Gosh, so quick. I know. But it's like, you know, he's, he's been in the league five years. It's crazy. It's, the thing with Kareem Hunt is like, if you're the Browns, I mean, he knows that the Browns are going to give him a bunch of carries to keep. He, he's fresh. in the Orlando Brown situation where he has the rare opportunity to have leverage as a non-quarterback. Wait, does he? If they don't have a quarterback, they're going to need Kareem Hunt. They can't just give Nick Chubb the ball 50 times. Sure. So maybe yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he's yeah. trying to time it. Like yeah. if Deshaun Watson didn't have all the off-field stuff and was playing, Nick Chubb, he could ask for it, but let's be real. Deshaun Watson is the offense. Now the offense starts with the running backs, it feels like. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a that's a fair point. I mean, I just think that, like, the, he knows that they're going to give him a ton of carries because he's in the final years deal. Oh, that too. That's he right. Doesn't, he doesn't want to get all those carries, get hurt, and then not be able to get a contract in the in the, in the the offseason. So he wants to get traded now so he can, you know, he, he wants to go somewhere where he's going to, or, or you know, they're going to split carries, right? He's not going to get, like, three. He, he wants to go somewhere where he can leverage uh, more opportunity to play in order to get money in the all, next offseason or to get a contract extension from a new team. So it's 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 just a mess. And the Browns, I mean, obviously, they're, they're like, look, dude, we, like you say. He's hunt. not getting a long-term deal. Like, yeah. James yeah. Conner got the deal he got because he was past 26 or whatever he was when he left Pittsburgh. It's just hard as a 28-year-old, I'm talking about next year for Kareem Hunt, to get a, you're not getting a four-year contract. Right. Or you get a four-year contract that's going to pay for one year. I mean, right. yeah, let's be real about it. By the way, Jimmy Haslam, so the Browns will, quote, Respect and honor, end quote, the Deshaun Watson appeal process. So, yep. Um, all right. Uh, oh, by the way, the uh, the sale of the Denver Broncos officially approved by the NFL owners. Yeah, I saw you make your little joke about David Tepper being poor. Yeah, it was, it was like uh, it was uh, just just approved. All right. What is Rob Wal- oh, Walton? Is um, Walmart? Yeah, the former Walmart CEO and son of Walmart founder Sam Walton. Yeah, I think I think they have a few a few pennies to rub together. Yeah, he's like substantially he's he's the richest NFL owner by like four to five fat like a factor of like five. All right, well, that's how you buy a football team. 
Well, I didn't realize David Tepper was like that. Okay, so David Tepper has sixteen billion dollars, and he's the richest. He was the richest NFL owner by like ten million, ten billion dollars. What do you think Rob Walton's net worth is according to Google? Well, if you said factor five, fifty billion, fifty nine point four billion dollars. That is outrageous. I don't want to be a and communist. I don't want to be a communist. Hold on. I don't want to be a communist, but that sounds like a lot of money for one person. <laughs> like you spread that around. That's just me. Um, what, else? what else is crazy? Well, his sister. Oh, gosh. She's worth like a couple billion, too. Yeah, but she's married to Sam Cronkey. Uh, <laughs> Ann Walton, Walton Cronkey. They have to be worth over a hundred billion, right? So her. Gosh, a hundred billion dollars. Yeah. Her could buy that espresso machine I want so badly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, so all right. So Ann Walton is the daughter of Bud Walton, who is the brother and co founder of Walmart. Sam, yes. Sam is the the Mac. Yes. And then in 1974, Ann Walton and Stan Kroenke got married. Oh wow, they've been married almost 50 years. Yeah. That's a good run. So Ann Walton. See Ann Walton Cronkey net worth. She is worth by herself eight point one billion dollars. All right, that's up to sixty. What's that? Sixty eight billion for the the Walton, the two Waltons. And Stan and Stan Cronkey is worth ten point seven billion dollars. Seventy eight billion between those three. Holy Moses in the daytime. Seventy eight billion. Yeah. What is uh? I don't want to get too far afield. What is um? Bill Gates worth? Uh, I don't feel like he's worth it. He's given away a lot of money, or so he tells people. I don't know if he does or not, but $111.8 billion. My bad, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> That's on me. Elon Musk is worth $264 billion. That is is awesome. he richer than um, Amazon? Yeah, Bezos, Bezos? is 166 okay. billion. Right. I mean, they're just, I'm just going off of Google, obviously. Mark That's Zuckerberg, $60 billion. That's it? It's pretty weak. Yeah, he's poor. Um, what's, uh, Paul Allen, he's obviously, he's passed, but Paul Allen. Oh, he was part of Microsoft, I think. Yeah, they both did Microsoft. Um, I think 20.3, oh, he was worth $20.3 billion at the time of his death. The 43rd richest person in the world. Mm. And Bill Gates had a lot more money than Paul Allen. Yeah. Would you, would you settle for $20.3 billion? No, I would I would ask for more. Uh, according to Google, and this is interesting left from ScottFujita.com, uh, the former football player, the poorest NFL owner is you want to guess who it is, or do you have it in front of you? Oh, it's Mark Davis. Yeah. Guess how much he's worth, or do you know that? Five hundred thousand dollars. Five five hundred million, I think. Yeah, that's what it is five hundred million. I mean, it's like, but you know, I mean, I think that's his only job though. The Raiders, like he doesn't have, a, he's not in steel or whatever. He, like no kidding. He's Raiders so, and Raiders and Flobies. That's where he's made I, his money. I, you know, he, 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 she, she's, I didn't like the Floby stuff. That was pretty good. You know what Floby is? Yeah, of course. Um, the, the thing about, but you know, what's interesting though about the Mark Davis thing that like we joke about, it's like, oh, he's only got $500 million. But if you only have $500 million and you have to put $230 million in, a, in escrow to sign a, uh, someone to a giant contract, that's a problem. It's not his money though. It's the, the the team's money. Like, does Bezos own a team? He doesn't. No, he owns the Washington Post. He's on a team. Um, even the Washington Post, for example, that's not Bezos's money. He's they 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 have their finance department and and you yeah, know maybe he cash though. I mean, like that cash is probably coming from the owner. Like an influx of a million here, a million there, but I don't think that would that would be a problem. No, I think it's way more than that. Yeah. The NFL team doesn't have two hundred thirty million dollars earmarked for like like the Haslam's. The Haslam's definitely came up with a lot of that cash. All right, yeah, I don't know the math on that, so you could be right, but I you don't get rich by giving people money though. That's, you're not, I mean, but you're not you're you're put, just putting it in escrow. I mean, Jimmy Haslam's worth three point nine billion. Yeah, but you can't invest that money if you don't have it. Is my point. I know you're not you're not just you're not oh, setting you it on fire, invest, but you just invested it into your quarterback. You hope if you're the Browns. Yeah. Or it backfires badly. Yeah. Yeah. And you're rolling with Jacoby Brissett. And I, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, I'm sure that, I'm sure there are ways that they they figure out how to like how to do it so that way he doesn't like go to the bank and get out two hundred thirty million dollars. And oh, Mark Davis one hundred percent does. <laughs> yeah, that's right. In dimes and nickels. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's why Derek Carr's contract probably has so little guarantees in it. Oh, remember they remember they never brought it up. 
No, no um, one ever mentioned the guaranteed money in his contract. It is so small. Right, right, right. Mike Brown is number two on this list, according to scottfajita.com. So, uh, take Derek Carr had $25 million fully guaranteed in his contract. <laughs> so, Mark Davis, I mean, that's like, that's easy for Mark Davis to pull. You know? No, I get it. Interestingly, 10th on the list in terms of, um, quote unquote, poorest NFL owners are John Marr and Steve Tisch, even though they're in New York. For some reason, you feel like they'd be incredibly wealthy. I know. It's surprising. I found that surprising too. And the Steelers on that list, not surprising. Um, just because that that they they do Steelers. They don't do anything else. Right. And they're sort of a family mom and pop operation, as it were, as much as you can be in the NFL. All right. That's all I got. Yep. That's all we got, too. That is the show. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We're back. Go to vote. Course. Remember, go vote for the People's Choice Podcast Awards. We are finalist. If we win the award, I said I'd get a tattoo, so I will. So go vote for Wilson. I'm Brinson. We'll see you guys later.